Hello, and welcome to the Evolving Christian Faith Network video channel. My name is Bo McGuffey. I am your host, and I go by the name of Irreverence on the web. My goal overall is to present a progressive Christian voice for those who want to explore that question into what is Christianity evolving. So today, I want to talk about Christian hope. Now, if you come from a more traditional background, it's possible that what I have to say is going to seem a little bit new to you. Um, in fact, it might even sound downright wrong from the way you understand it. So before I begin to talk about a, pro a progressive Christian hope, and I first think I need to talk a little bit more about a traditional and a more popular understanding of Christian hope. And then, once I've kind of talked about that a little bit, I can kind of hit on uh, how a progressive Christian hope is a bit different, and more specifically, why. So, I want to say, first of all, that both a traditional and a progressive Christianity use the same ultimate metaphor for Christian hope, and that is we both talk about it in terms of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the divine end game, if you will. It is this idealized reality into which we are all headed, and for both kinds of Christians, progressive and traditional, their spiritual task is to align their own personal agendas with that idealized vision of that which is to come. And so, both of us pro proclaim to live into the kingdom. The coming kingdom of God is that for which Christians hope for most. But, progressives traditionalists, we each understand what that means a bit differently. And the key to that difference lies in how each of us tends to understand how God is related to the world. From a more traditional understanding, uh, God created the world separate from God's self. And God created everything that is the natural order of the universe and established all those natural laws. And as the creator, God, this is important, God is not subject to the natural laws of creation. Rather, God is above them. And so, God has not only the power to establish them, the laws, that is the laws of nature, but God also has the power to bend or even outright break them. And this power over, power over that God wields, is known theologically as the sovereignty of God. Okay, so for a traditionalist then, part of the Christian hope is found in the possibility that God can intervene. Prayers for divine assistance then can lead to the tweaking of the way that things are working out. And in more dire straits, because God can downright override the laws of nature, if God so desires, and then put them back into place, it's even possible in this framework to receive a miracle. And a miracle is a complete break with the laws of nature. Okay, so... Now think about it here. If God is attentive to us, and if God is for us, and if God is sovereign in this way, then it makes sense that part of Christian hope would be hope for divine intervention as one goes through life. I mean, why not? When you think about it, why not? So one element of a traditional understanding of Christian hope is for divine intervention. Now, another element of traditional Christian hope, which is actually probably far more important, really, is also more easily recognized. And this is the hope of going to heaven after we die. If I believe in my heart and confess with my lips that Jesus is my Lord and Savior, then I don't have to fear the torments of hell, but rather I can hope for eternal life. This hope for an afterlife actually goes back to that separation that I had mentioned a little bit earlier about God and the world, the idea that, that you've got creator and you've got creation, they're separate, and this separated sovereign God has to be somewhere. Just like any king needs a kingdom, and so too, if you will, God needs a certain space. And so the kingdom of God, then, is a timeless space of reality in which the divine will is fully realized. In other words, it's another way of talking about heaven that we can go to when we die. I mean, it's not something we can truly attain here because it has to be separate from our world. I mean, it has to be separate from our world simply because God is separate. 
from our world, and that's effectively a dwelling space for God. And so a traditional Christian hope comes down to mainly two things, at least according to my understanding, and that is that it is possible to convince a sovereign God to bend or even miraculously break reality for you to get you out of whatever trouble it is that you happen to be in. This is the divine intervention, okay? And no matter what, this is the other thing is, no matter what, no matter how bad things get for you, don't worry. Because ultimately, they're going to get much better for you after you die. And that's, that's the hope for the afterlife. Now, some years ago, while I was talking with someone coming from a pretty strong traditional perspective, um, basically I said something to the effect of, what if... What, what if there isn't actually a heaven? What if there is no life after death for any of us? And the person's response was something like, well, if there's no going to heaven after you die, then what's the point of being Christian in the first place? And I think that very response identifies, for that person, at least the extent to which his hope was locked into that traditional perspective, and he couldn't easily break out of it. And still, I mean, if he did break out, he couldn't find Christianity to be, to be worthwhile, let alone important. And I think a lot of people are caught here in this either-or dynamic. Either it's true and therefore important, or it, as it was stated, is not true and therefore irrelevant. Now, there seem to be a couple of really opposing ways in which people can get locked into this kind of a dynamic. And many of them, on the one hand, many of them are able to hold on to this rigid perspective, uh, this rigid, rigid faith perspective. Alien, though, it seems to secular culture, they're able to hold on to it in some form or another. And others, however, on the other hand, find that they can no longer accept this foundational premise of God out there. And so if that foundational premise of God out there is, is just unrealistic to them, then they have no real choice to project, reject everything associated with it as equally being a lie. Now, I obviously don't accept this either-or dichotomy. Um, I mean, it's not that I believe that either-or dichotomies are always invalid. I think there are times in which they can are. Uh, it's just that I don't believe that this is the case in, in the sense of Christian hope. And just because the more traditional framework doesn't work for me, it doesn't mean that an alternative Christian framework won't work out even better. Progressive Christians tend to understand how God is related to the world differently. Rather than seeing God as this separated from the world, Progressives tend to find God within the world, so we tend to swap out that hierarchical domineering language of sovereignty and power. We swap it out with partnership and mutuality. You see, our focus has shifted away from asking God to intervene for us toward opening ourselves up to God to intervene through us. While God continually creates, we are co-creators with God. And so this shift in understanding God as not separate from, but found within creation, changes the way that we understand how the divine intervenes in creation. So alongside of that shift, that shift from God separate and over to God within, alongside that shift, in how we see, uh, the, excuse me, alongside that shift is a shift in how we see the kingdom of God. For if God is found within creation, then time and space, history and context, if you will, take on that ultimate importance rather than some distant timeless reality. That, that, that heaven, if you will, is... Forget that. That's not nearly as important as the here and the now. The utopian vision of the kingdom of God isn't something that we can, or that, that we bank on getting shipped to in our coffins. That's, that's, that's not where we're going. 
Rather, the kingdom of God is something that we work toward in the here and now. Because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of time and space. Our hope, then, is that a better world comes into being each and every day. If heaven is the metaphor that most people think of first when they think of a traditional Christian uh, angle into hope, then I have to say that the equivalent for a progressive Christians might be Emmanuel, God with us. When we start to think of God as manifest in the universe, it can radically transform how we interact in our own little worlds. For example, what would happen, just, just, just think about this for a second, what would happen if one came to look around themselves and looking for God in everyday interactions? I'm not talking about a reflection of God, I'm talking about looking for God in everyday interactions. I mean, perhaps they might come to respect nature a little bit more, for example. Perhaps what they consider to be most important on their daily agendas would sort of shift around, if not turn upside down. Perhaps they would start seeing the people around them as sisters and brothers, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, sharing in my common humanity. I mean, just taking that very last one, what would happen if that sense of human kinship started to override how we saw each other, what if people started to see themselves reflected back in them, at them when, when they looked in the eyes of another human being? I suspect that if people were able to do that regularly, it would make a huge difference on how we relate to each other, especially when it came to settling our differences. And there are a lot of differences in the world. I mean, think about it. The, the global issues that we deal with on a regular basis, wars, crime, things like that. This is how we relate to each other. These are the things that could surely change. I mean, what if you gathered around the Thanksgiving table with your kin? Okay? When you gather around that, that that's your kin. You might not like what they have to say, or even what they do, or even, you know, how they're living their lives, but, you know, truth be told, you're probably not going to want to pop a cap in someone's ass for it at the dinner table. You see, we're identifying with those that we call our kin. And when we identify with others, at the very least, it limits the ex extent to which we are willing to react to those things that we don't like in them or that come out of them. The power of Emmanuel is not power over, but it is power with. It is not coercive, but it is nurturing. It is the power manifest most clearly in human solidarity. And when human beings live in solidarity with one another in a nurturing and caring community, the world changes for the better. And that that, I believe, is the hope that progressive Christianity bears for the world. A very real hope for the human race in the here and in the now. And I'm not talking about some sort of it's going to get better whenever you die kind of hope. Ours is a hope, or, or actually, it's not even that kind of hope that big daddy God in the sky is going to reach down and fix things for you, but rather, ours is a hope that empowered, that is empowered by Emmanuel, God with us. It is a hope empowered by people taking responsibility for each other like adults and working with God to make the world a better place, not expecting God to just jump in and do it for us in one form or another. So what's the point? What's the point of Christianity if it doesn't care about life after death. The point is that we believe we are called to become agents of life 
while we are alive. Not because we get some sort of reward, such as an afterlife, but because we believe that God is with us and that to become an agent of life is our divine destiny. So, anyway, that's what I have to say today about a progressive Christian hope, and maybe that's where you are, or maybe not, regardless. I would like to think that it made you think at least a little bit about what you believe and why, because, well, that's what I do. So, thank you again very much for spending time with me today. I hope you do come back again. If you want to know more about where I'm coming from, feel free to go over to check out my past articles in my blog at www.evolvingchristianfaith.net. Yes, the Evolving Christian Faith Network. And if you really, really, really want to know more about where I'm coming from, Feel free to buy the book, Drinking from an Empty Glass, Living Out of a Meaningless Spirituality, that, yes, I wrote. You can find a link to it on the website. And until next time, peace.